What's up everybody? It is Matt from Electric All Wheel and today we have the Lucky X1 750 watt rear hub with a 48 volt 15 amp hour battery and we are going to install an Electric All Wheel dual battery discharge balancer kit, the 40 amp version. And we will also demonstrate the DX2 install which will allow you to have a couple other USB accessories powered by the dual battery system of the e-bike. There is a USB port on the bottom of the display, so keep that in mind, but if you need more, we can do that. We're contemplating an internal external installation, but what we do know is we will need a house for the USB adapters, so we anticipate utilizing the bike case beetle bag cell phone bag that we've used in a lot of our videos. It is very convenient, so we're going to pursue that. And then we will use a down tube battery strapped to the frame of this bike with the bike case uh, bottle cage strap adapters. And thing you need to know about those is that you need to get a different set of screws so that the heads aren't sticking out from the plate and the battery can slide down the mount without being obstructed by the screws. We use two of those. One only has one screw in it at the bottom and it's for stability. And then the other two are hitting where the normal battery mount would go. If you haven't already, give us a like and subscribe on YouTube. It is our primary, and if you're in the area, check out eBikes of Tampa Bay, Florida. Get in that Facebook group, make an event, and go for a ride with your friends. Stick around for the range calculation at the end of the video. We are doubling our amp hours, essentially doubling our range, but we'll give you some calcs with the mic toll constant. Here we go. All right, so I'm gonna take this plate off. This is very similar to uh, Electric XP and perfectly right up front. Uh, with room to spare, we see the XT60 connector. It's great. So I guess I can go ahead and take this out. I know this has that Bluetooth um, transponder here. So uh, let's go ahead. TP306, 48 volt to 60 volt. It's part of the system. It is actually wired in, so it controls power. So keep that in mind. Not much of an issue for us right now in terms of adding a second battery. Uh, the controller, 48 volt. It has a, an off voltage of 39 plus or minus one with a current limit of 25 plus or minus one, so up to 26 amps. So we're going to use the 40 volt balancer kit go ahead and get this thing out so i went ahead and got my two cables out and my balancer i'm going to go ahead and plug my balancer in so i'm looking for the controller output here it is the male xt60 female pins which in some circles is female xt60 so you can take that for what you will. So then we are going to use the input on the balancer for the N of the XT60, and then this one will be the second battery. For that, we're going to run a cable. We're going to make sure that this end comes in and is able to be plugged into the input on the balancer, like so and we're just going to run it up through the housing. And then I'm just going to plug it in. Now I'm going to put my controller back, take out some of this slack from the cable. work this in there and then right now I'm going to turn this over and then just slip it in over the top all I'm doing is making sure that the excess just slides down to the left and it does it's not much of an issue at all I'm going to go ahead and plug that in just make sure all your connections are good you're not smashing anything Now 
don't over tighten those, especially the first one. Right, let's go ahead and what we'll do is I'm going to go ahead and just strap this thing up to the bike and get this process going. So here is the battery mount for the down tube battery that we've chosen. And at the bottom, you can see the bike case bottle cage strap adapters here. Now this one only has one screw in the end of the mounting plate here but it helps for stability and then it holds it down. I actually use the screw that came with the bottle cage strap and you can see that there is another opening here. Works very well, I'm pleased with it. But this one, I use both mounting holes and I change the screws so that you can slide the battery over the plate. And that makes it possible to strap it to the body of the bike. And then with the texture of this stuff, it's pretty much no slip. Yes, it does jiggle a little bit, but uh, it's secure and I'm comfortable riding with it. So keep that in mind. Also, I like to make sure that my straps are on the same side just for uniformity. Let me go ahead and put this battery back on. Lock it in place. And then here, what I'm trying to do is avoid any issues with steering so i'm going to back this off just enough and then you can see right there where the gap is and that's with the knuckle right here at the joint of the folding stem so we're good so now i need to pay attention to how my straps come under and so I'm going to try and avoid the keyhole up front here. And I'm making sure to go under my wires. I'm going, I'm slipping underneath this. Yes, I know I covered the keyhole here, but it can be slipped forward. And then I will give it a final tightening in a little bit. Hopefully that holds, but regardless, it's still easy to undo. So now I'm slipping underneath. Now with this setup, uh, I know you guys saw me install that cable earlier and here it is. I'll bring it up and out and then I'm just going to plug it in so you can see what's going on here. Uh, I'm just leaving the bike open so I can test it. That's the purpose of this. And so we heard it light up. That means we've got a good connection. Um, and so I know that we have power. Now for any of the owners, you guys know you have the remote control and I am still beyond the security measures of this bike. But for the purposes of the video, we're gonna show you that it works. Keep in mind the bike is open. So it's just second battery that's plugged in. has one perfect yep. so at this point i would leave some of the cable loose so that it can fold something along these lines making sure that it has enough slack at the joint and then what you can do is utilize some tidy helper cable clips and these have the double-sided industrial tape on them so when they go down they clip around the wires very easily and it's a good add here i'm not going to put them on because this is for demo but uh, these are definitely worth it i would place a couple right here and here maybe catching the xt60 and then zip tie my cabling for the rest so i'm going to get a zip tie on this thing There you go. And then I'm just going to go ahead and unplug that XT60. The bike is still on. Let me run this back wheel for you, show it's good connection. Boom. So for the DX2 installation.
There we go. That's our cell phone bag strapped in. We'll get this and these. I only used one of the straps, so you do have the other one. You can actually take it off if you want it. But now what I'm going to do is open this up and then replace the 40 amp balancer with a DX2, like so. And then with that, we will use this accessory to actually plug into an output of the DX2, uh, which is for controller for dual motorbike. But if you don't have that, you can actually have a second uh, port for getting power for USB accessories. There are two USB plugs. We will leave a link in the description below. Unplug this battery for a moment. All right. Get this out of there. You know we have our second battery cable here, but we need to get another one up into the housing, actually. So we're going to need to bring another cable in here. What we're going to do is run another cable up into here and this will actually plug into it's going to plug into the plate so we are going to do an external install with the dx2 and we need to get an extension so that we can plug in the factory battery so we're going to run another cable up into the housing And then we'll plug the existing cable into the controller. And then that's it. We have our two cable ends out, so that is good. We'll fit the cabling inside the controller housing. And then we'll go ahead and close it up. For this, I have my previously installed cable, which I zip tied in. Let me go ahead and free that up. going to take these two and then run them up. You might think about putting them beneath your uh, Velcro strap right here, but just think about the length when you get it inside. Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and plug in my cables. We have one input, which is the battery plate from the factory battery, and then one output, which goes to the controller. We heard it just pop on because the bike is closed, so we know that it's working. And then you plug in your second battery on another input of the DX2. And then from there, with the last output, you go ahead and plug in your accessory adapter with your two USBs. Hook all your goodies inside. The dual zipper eats up a lot of the excess cable, which is good. And there you go. Well, there you have it. We have successfully installed an electric all-wheel dual battery discharge balance kit and then substituted that with a DX2 kit to allow for two extra USB adapters, adapters powered by your bike's battery system. So with the balancer kit or the combiner kit, the DX2, we have an output and you, we have an adapter that allows you to plug in for two USB outputs on top of what you have in your display, allowing you to plug in your lights, your extra charging cords, whatever it is that you need. With the extra 15 amp hour battery, we have essentially doubled the range. I know a lot of you stuck around for the range calculation, so let's just get to it. The original battery is 48 volt, 15 amp hours, and we added another 48 volt, 15 amp hour battery for 30 amp hours total. And then we're gonna multiply that by 48, 
and you get 1,440 watt hours. And then we're going to divide that by 25. And 25 is the mica toll constant, which says it's 25 watt hours per mile ridden at 20 miles an hour throttle only. And you get 57.6 miles out of this lucky x1 with the 750 watt rear hub with mag wheels which i really like a uh, little overboard with the security features but i'm sure some of you out there really appreciate that stuff we were able to do an internal install with a 40 amp kit but we also demonstrated the dx2 external with the usb adapters and we like that a lot we will leave a link in the description below for a suspension seat post uh, we're going to find a shim that works for this thing i believe it is a 33.9 di millimeter diameter seat post and it is 33.9 millimeter diameter and there is not a chance that we are going to ever live with a hardtail bike that doesn't have a bike case suspension seat post and if you haven't done that get it in your life you can thank me later we will try and leave a link for the setup and then if need be we'll leave a link for amazon shim that will fit this bike if you haven't already, give us a like and subscribe on YouTube. It is our primary. And if you're in the area, check out eBikes of Tampa Bay, Florida. Listen, you got to get in that Facebook group, make an event so you can go for a ride with your eBike friends. We will talk to you next time.